Welcome back to our conversation about the news media with our guest, Northeastern University journalism professor Dan Kennedy, co-host with Ellen Clegg of the podcast, What Works? The Future of Local News. So for years now, Dan, we've been talking about how unique Boston is because we do have two daily newspapers. Most cities don't. What is the status of the two dailies? We've been hearing all sorts of stuff in recent years about uh, their financial footing. Are they both still viable? Well, the Boston Globe certainly seems to be viable. Uh, they are growing. Uh, they are apparently profitable, although as a privately held company, you can't really get a look at the books. But they proclaim themselves to be profitable just before the pandemic. And like a lot of news organizations, surprisingly, they have grown during the pandemic. They got a lot of new digital subscribers. So it seems to me that the Globe is doing pretty well. Now, the Boston Herald is owned by Alden Global Capital, which is the worst newspaper owner in the country. And under Alden, they've gotten very, very small. They continue to come out. But I think that the idea that we have a two daily newspaper dynamic in Boston really hasn't been true for a long time. Mm -hmm. the, the Herald is one of a number of news organizations that matter. The two public radio stations, the local TV newscasts. I don't really see that the Herald is any more important than any of those, but you know, we're glad that it still comes out every day. Well, you mentioned digital. It's good to hear the Globe is, is growing in terms of its digital subscribers. I'm one of them. Uh, you do hear, however, that it's hard to make money off that. Certainly, you can't make the kind of profits uh, that you could back in the day with the print edition before the Internet came along. And on the national scene right now, there's a big sort of developing story about uh, early launch problems at CNN+. Plus which was CNN's venture into streaming. This was billed as their foray into the future. What happened? Well, you know, um, I understand why CNN wanted to do this, because increasingly people are cutting the cord and getting all of their video programming uh, on the Internet and without being reliant on cable. Right. But, you know, what I don't understand about CNN is that they thought they could do this without offering CNN TV. If you get CNN Plus, in order to watch the TV stream, you have to authenticate with your cable provider. No doubt this has something to do with the contracts with the cable companies, but, you know, CNN is non-compelling enough without even being able to watch the TV stream. So this business model is suspect then? I think it's pretty suspect when what you're offering is Chris Wallace yeah. uh, as an alternative to what is on CNN TV. It seems to be off to a disastrous start. Now, it's only been a few weeks. Yeah. They may write the ship. Although it sounds like the new ownership that's coming in is already planning cutbacks. Uh, not auspicious. Not auspicious at all, to put it mildly. We've got to wrap, but you interact with journalism students every day. Uh, when they come to you during your office hours and say, gee, Professor Kennedy, what's my best chance of making a decent living in journalism? What do you tell them? You know, a lot of our students are, have been able to get onto major news organizations within a very short time after graduating, which astonishes me. It certainly shows that they're smarter and more capable than I ever was. Mm -hmm. What worries me is that the smaller community papers where they tended to get their feet wet are just drying up, and I don't know where those first jobs are going to come from. So you tell them what? Plastics? Real estate? I, I tell them, you know, it's always been hard. It's harder now. But if you're determined, you will find a way. Good for you. Nice and supportive. Thanks a lot, Professor. Thank Good to you, see John. you.